From his cinematic classics to his blockbuster embarrassments, today I'm going to be counting down all 15 of M. Night Shyamalan's films. Coming in here at the bottom at number 15 is The Last Airbender. Now, to be fair, there is some personal bias going on in this one because I absolutely love the original cartoon series. And I remember going to see this film at midnight on release night and just being so, so utterly disappointed and baffled at how terrible this movie was. I feel like ultimately a lot of people were let down and this was a huge flop for Shyamalan. Coming in at number 14 is The Happening. Now, without spoiling any major plot points, just in case you don't know what's going on in this film, there are sequences where Mark Wahlberg is talking to a plastic plant. Needless to say, the dread in this film is absolutely ridiculous. And while it can be accidentally hilarious, I feel like most sane people would assume that this would be some kind of parody film of a horror film. But actually, A Night Shyamalan plays it super straight, and it ultimately ends up in a very kind of embarrassing type of horror film. All right, right here at number 13 is going to be After Earth. Now, this is a sci-fi action film starring Will Smith. Sounds great, except for some reason, In My Shyamalan makes Will Smith talk and act like a robot. Will Smith, one of the most charismatic actors I've seen, is somehow boring in this film. Needless to say, this is another huge flop in the blockbuster department for Shyamalan, and it is filled again with terrible looking CGI, but the number one sin is making Will Smith boring somehow. All right, coming in at number 12 is going to be Lady in the Water. Now, I think maybe I have this kind of soft spot for the literary elements and a little bit of the fantasy stuff kind of going on in this film, but ultimately I kind of feel bad for Shyamalan a little bit, which might be why this is ranked a little higher than some people might expect it. Overall, though, this is where we see Shyamalan kind of start to slip after a lot of his big successes. And this was universally hated as far as I saw by a lot of people. And it's because it's a little pretentious. Shyamalan writes himself as a writer whose story is going to like save humanity or something. And also he just makes this villain out of this critic. And again, I kind of feel bad for the guy a little bit in this because I can see kind of some of the insecurity going on here. And, you know, there's some okay stuff going on but i think ultimately a lot of people struggle with the silliness and ultimately kind of like the pretentiousness of this film coming in at number 11 is going to be old and the fact that old is this high on the list should be a huge red flag for Shyamalan as a director a lot of people actually kind of dig on this film, but I think it's absolute garbage. It's got kind of a decent horrific premise with this kind of time aspect going on. But there is a character in this film named Mid-Size Sedan. Mid-size sedan, and that is just the tip of the cringe iceberg here. This film is filled with awkward dialogue and ridiculous situations and plot beats like child sexuality. This film does have a kind of iconic, horrific scene towards the end, which a lot of people point to as like a positive moment for this film, and I kind of agree, but ultimately I really do think that this film is is just kind of garbage. Now on the number 10 spot, we are going to have Glass, which is the kind of disappointing ending of this trilogy that Shyamalan set up. A superhero trilogy. And it's one thing to waste the acting talent of Will Smith in an action sci-fi film, but it's another thing to waste the acting talent of Bruce Willis, Samuel L. Jackson, Anya Taylor-Joy and James McAvoy by taking these superhero characters and essentially just placing them into therapy, putting them in these rooms and making them sit and talk 
in a superhero movie that promises this kind of huge epic moment that it totally just farts out on. Now, to be fair, the reason that this movie is as high as it is is because there is so much acting talent here that occasionally they get their time to shine and there's a few cool action sequences, but overall, I just found this movie to be a huge disappointment and a huge letdown as the end of this trilogy that has two other fantastic films within it. All right, now we're kind of crawling out of the dumpster now with number nine. This is going to be his debut film, Praying With Anger. Now, this feels like it was a very personal project for Shyamalan, and it feels like there's a lot of self-referential things going on here. Um, this film is essentially about an Indian American student who is in college, and he goes to India as part of an exchange program. Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend anyone like seek this out, but if you're curious about Shyamalan's like humble beginnings, then it's it's an OK watch. I think I'm definitely a lot softer on this film because it was his first film and because it seems so personal. So it's I'm not crazy about it, but it's it's not terrible. Another early entry is Wide Awake, which stars Joseph Cross and Rosie O'Donnell. This is a coming of age story and it's okay. It's kind of uneven in its tone and its messaging. It deals a lot with finding religion and finding God. So if that's something you're particularly interested in, it might be a decent watch, but it's not a film that I would particularly recommend people seek out yet again. Okay, we are finally getting into some decently middling movies here. Next up, I have Shyamalan's latest with Knock at the Cabin. Now, this movie mostly has some decent to good acting going on in here. Dave Bautista does a particularly good job. The problem with this film is it feels very one note. It sets up a lot of themes that kind of beg to be explored on a deeper level that essentially just Aren't. There are a few performances here that are a little questionable, uh, but for the most part, I dug on this film and would recommend people generally kind of check it out as a middling film for Shyamalan. Okay, next up we have The Village, and honestly, I feel like in this list, Knock at the Cabin and The Village could easily be switched out because they suffer from a lot of the same problems. We do have some good acting power here again, this time with Joaquin Phoenix, but the problem here is that a lot of these themes that are set up, again, are explored on a deeper level or a lot of things like don't kind of make sense like Shyamalan wants them to. Um, there is some interesting ideas, but I think a lot of this problem too is in how it is marketed and set up as this kind of like spooky horror tale, which ultimately becomes something completely different. I remember seeing this on like the debut weekend and being super disappointed in that. And then later watches too, it still kind of teases something that ultimately it isn't. And I think that has a tendency to kind of let audiences down. At least it kind of lets me down each time I watch this film. Okay, next up we have The Visit. And after writing this kind of like string of failures, it feels like Shyamalan went back to basics a little bit with this one. I was excited to see him return back to kind of his horror roots. And ultimately, this movie is a pretty uh, low stakes, low key type of film that's got some good dread in it. It's got some good scares. It's got that iconic Shyamalan twist. So again, I feel like this is kind of like a back to basics, find your grounding, kind of get back to what you do best. And I feel like that this is maybe one of Shyamalan's most underrated and underseen films and definitely a highlight in his later career. All right, now this might be a shocker to some, but coming in at number four is going to be Unbreakable. Shyamalan tries his hand at the superhero genre and largely succeeds, 
Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson do a really good job. They play some really deep characters that I feel like are fleshed out and explored really well. The problem is I feel like Shyamalan still tends to over explain things a little bit here. He doesn't necessarily trust his audience. He has to kind of beat you over the head with some of his facts. He does his kind of like classic twist here, but it's not a super strong twist. I feel like I feel like a lot of things are kind of telegraphed to you throughout this film, but there's some fantastic acting in here. There's some cool ideas. It's fun to see a superhero film that's pretty grounded and not so over the top, not so filled with CGI. And I feel like Unbreakable really kind of set a precedent for what a superhero film could be with some really deep, interesting characters and not a lot of frills. The good thing about Shyamalan at this level is there's a lot of positive things to talk about. And I do feel like Unbreakable is one of his classic films. All right, coming in at number three is going to be Signs. Now, I feel like the dread in this film is fantastic. And yet when it came out and still today, it's a very accessible film. This affected a large number of audiences across the world. And I think one of the things that kind of drops it down for me is the ultimate logic surrounding the aliens in this. I know a lot of people fight it because it's not essentially like an alien film, even though that is the foundation that's laid out. I do agree that this is more about the family and the family dynamic, and particularly one man who has lost his faith and is struggling with it and is kind of like seeking it out again, looking after his family. I do agree that that is kind of the general idea, but it does kind of ground itself in this logic that is ultimately questionable and flawed and so while i do think signs is a fantastic horror type of alien film that's got a lot of good dread that is very accessible i do think there's some questionable plot that's going on here and yet i still consider it one of Shyamalan's classics all right, I feel like a lot of people are going to be angry with me on this one, but in number two, I'm going to have Split. Now, this is what I feel like Shyamalan does best. A horror film that's got some fantastic acting, some good dread, and some really good ideas that I feel like are explored well thanks to the fantastic acting of James McAvoy, who pairs really well with Anya Taylor-Joy. There is a signature Shyamalan twist in here, which honestly got me so good. I remember seeing this in the movie theaters and being like so blown away by it. I feel like this movie has a lot of rewatchability, at least for me, and it fits in well with the trilogy that he ultimately set up. Unfortunately, he didn't kind of flesh that out well. Definitely for me, it is his best film in his later career. I feel like this one really shines for me but as a whorehound you know that might be a personal bias and of course coming in at number one is going to be the sixth sense this film really put Shyamalan on the map this had a huge, huge cultural impact. It's horror base, which I really appreciate. The effect that this had on so many people and general audiences, I feel like it wouldn't be responsible to put it any lower. Bruce Willis and Haley Joel Osment do a fantastic job, and I still remember the discussions going on around this film. It really did have this kind of like big blockbuster feel, but with this really dark premise, which is a lot of fun to think about now. That just doesn't happen a lot these days. And to be fair, it has a really great premise that I think is still fun to think about and explore to this day. This is absolutely a Shyamalan classic and for me, his number one film. So that is my ultimate Shyamalan countdown list. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons to get some weekly horror content from the Straight Chilling Podcast. And until next time, don't forget to keep chilling.